Welcome to MMA Uncensored Podcast. Here we are at UFC Middleweight. The let me get the let me get this right. The Cuban Missile Crisis. How are you doing today, brother? On top of the world, golden and great, man. I feel yep. good. What you do? You living a dream or what's up? Yeah, man. We're in Tampa right now. It's pretty nice, like eighty-five degrees. Uh, just celebrating Memorial Day. Um, happy to be a proud Navy veteran, man. Oh, for real? You 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 served in the military? Yeah, nineteen ninety three to ninety nine, uh, United States Navy. Damn, I appreciate your service. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Yeah, I just know it's pretty wild. I, I'm afraid. I hate the ocean. I, I'm not. I'm not afraid. I went on a cruise once, so I've been out there. But in the middle of the night, when you look out there at the end of the the cruise, like at the back of the cruise ship, you're just like. Phew. Man, if you fell, ain't no one know you're gone. There's nobody gonna know. We used to have this uh, this watch. It's called like aft and 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 aft watch, and you have to like sit there all night long with binoculars and just in case somebody falls over. There's a lot of different things, but we never had anybody fall over. Plus, everybody knew how to swim. Do you guys like? I know this. My friend is a. Uh, I guess he would be a merchant marine. Is that what they're called? Um, yes. He he always has. He does pirate watch. Was that something you guys had to do as well? Well, uh, Merchant Marine is the same thing as the Navy, but the Merchant Marines get paid um, basically to be civilians. And like if a Navy ship has 100 people, the Merchant Marines would be on the same boat and have like 10. So they kind of like work for profit. And we do the same watches, yes. Oh, you do the same watches. Did yeah, you ever get in like contact with any pirates? I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're pirates, but like I know that people would try to board boats. and, and Like Somalia. Them. Yeah, like in yeah, Somalia. Yeah. yeah, in Haiti. And, in, and when we were in Africa, Eritrea, Ethiopia, people would try to come near our boats. Um, and when Haiti, like, um, they'd more, like, try to sell us stuff. Or in Guantanamo Bay, they were, like, really poor. They'd float up next to us, try to sell us stuff. But in, like, Africa, um, they'd be more, like, you know, trying to do stuff. But we had a big, you know, our boat was painted gray, man. We had guns all over the place. Ain't nobody going to fuck with us. Ain't nobody going to fuck with us. <laughs> My buddy told me about the thing that he'd be on watch all night and he'd, he'd see, and he's heard stories of other vessels that have been, you know, boarded and things would happen. And I was just like, man, I, I saw that movie. Uh, yeah, Captain, come, say what? Yeah, Captain something with Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. yeah. When I yeah. saw that, I was just like, oh, that's all I'm thinking of. I don't know <laughs> how dramatic it is or how close and accurate it was. But I'm just thinking like, dang, dude, that would be scary because one, you can't run anywhere. I mean, if you're on the boat or you're off the boat and then it's like, oh, but it yeah, scary. Nervous though, man. thank you so yeah, much. Thanks, man. So so let's get into let's get into talking about you. I want to talk about your last two fights. So I'm going to run down. I'm going to run down with the MMA and censored fans. So his last two fights, I'm going to start with um, the one. Is it Mackie Pilolo? Is that his name? Mackie Patolo. M Mackie Patolo. Well, you 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 put an anaconda choke on him in the, in the third round at UFC 258, and it was lights out. And I think that that fight for you and the ending and when you were sitting in the cage afterwards, man, it made everybody like, who the fuck is this guy? Tell yeah, us about yeah. that win. That, that's a it's that that win is uh it's, it's very near and dear to me like i, I love that win you know it, it it defines my entire struggle for the past 31 months prior you know i fought in july 6 2018 and in that fight i suffered uh, a missed weight i suffered a loss and then i suffered a uh torn latimus dorsey tendon and uh it, to get back to where I'm at was just a struggle. You know, everyone counted me out. No one knew who I was. Nothing was happening. It was the same thing in that fight. Everyone was counting me out. No one knew who I was. They didn't give a shit about me. And uh, next thing you know, um, you know, my my corner, James Krause, just, he said the words that needed to be said to me that resonated with me. And he, he lit a fire and I was like, all right. I went out there and I ended up securing the uh, Anaconda choke in the late third round and it was just right then and there it was just showing like hey whether you think you were winning or whether you think that um i'm a nobody like i'm here to stay i'm here to win and that's what i do uh big shout out to the james kraus on instagram at the james kraus uh kansas city missouri in the house you were born what 1990 you were born in 1990 and you're 31 years young. Look at you, mm -hmm. huh? And right after that fight, is that when you called out Miley Cyrus? Yeah, right after yeah. that, I got on the mic. Was, Sh uh, shout. Was, yeah, I was just out there just like living a dream. Just like, hey, I'm feeling myself. Boom, Miley, I walked out to you. Let's go. That's awesome, man. You made a lot of publicity. I mean, everybody was like posting you and that here next to each other and all these little memes. It was, it was awesome to see you kind of crossed over there, brother. 
Yeah, for sure. You know, you got to do something different. Everyone does all these call outs to MMA fighters and stuff. Fighting's going to happen regardless. What are you going to do about your brand? Let's build it up. Let's have exactly fun. like uh, what's it? Uh, Benil Deryush called out Tesla owner Elon Musk, and, and evidently he got a Tesla delivered a week later. Well, he bought the Tesla. That's the thing that he kind of he ruined his shot. You know, <laughs> then he, he ruled, but like now we don't like no, like it wasn't in the news for a long time. Like he. Right. Like there's a better way he could have did that, but he kind of, you know, I love this call. I love everything. I like that because now other fighters are doing exactly what I did. I was the first one to open up the path, and I, I love how Benil, Benil, is it Benil or Benil? Benil, I believe. Benil, yeah, Benil. I love how he called it out. I love how he talked something outside of <coughs> post fight speech was absolutely amazing. I love how he used his platform correctly, and uh, it was it was perfect. And that's how it should be done, you know. Absolutely. I, I, we're it, talking about the same stuff. Let's get into different. Let's get into different people. And spe yeah. speaking of perfection, how about how about that performance you put on against Tony Ferguson? Absolutely amazing, wow. you dominant. Know? It, you know it's crazy. Look at his like career, man. He had a, like a, a really rocky start. Like he was good, and then he, like he had that KO Edson Barbosa hit him with. He had those you know close bouts that later on, and it's just like you didn't think anything of it. And all of a sudden, he switched something in his mind and his his training and his effort and he's on a tear. He's rolling it down. He yeah. absolutely he absolutely is. And, and and on top of that, I believe he's having a baby in the next few months. That could have been a motivating factor for him. Absolutely. That could have been it could have been huge. I mean it was. He got himself a Tesla and a safe car for his wife. And he got himself a nice bonus check and himself sitting there in the top, you know, top echelon of 155, man. He's gonna be able to uh, probably fight for the belt here shortly. I believe so. He could be an alternate um, for the uh, McGregor versus Poor Year Three card, uh, UFC 264, and that's June. No, that's July 11th. Excuse me. Let's yeah. go to your. Let's go to your other win. Um, your last win was at USC Fight Night on ABC. Um, um, it was oh, versus Sam Alvey, smiling Sam Alvey. But in the second round, he wasn't smiling too much. No, he wasn't smiling. Look, Sam's a good dude, and and we're here. Very for good dude. That's what I'm here to do. And uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of people that, you know, are like, all right, Julian was getting beat up by uh, Maki, which I was. Maki was holding me and, 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 you know, holding me down and he was slowing it down. But it's like, that's 31 months off. Now I figured out my groove. Now I found my stuff. Now I was more dangerous. And, uh, you know, I went out there with Sam and Sam decided to stand with me. And there's a reason why people don't stand with me. And I proved to that. Why that was an awesome fight, man. That oh. was an awesome fight. And, 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 you know, I'm a friend with you and I'm a friend with him. Uh, um, and, and I'm watching that fight and I'm like, man, these guys are just throwing down, man. Like old school, pop, pop, pop. And then, you know, the best man won. You won. I think you won with a, a rear naked choke, I believe, RNC, right? Yeah, yeah. I did a, a rear naked choke, no hooks in, just drag. And uh, I, look, I like fighting the Sam Alvey. I like fighting Sam Alvey because he's a character and he's able to bring his character into the, the you know, the – the buildup of the fight. It's a good fight. I just really dislike fighters that, you know, we're in the entertainment business. We need to elevate the UFC to become something even greater than it already is for the people underneath us. Now, as a champion, I believe you are supposed to hold the whole entire weight class accountable and help elevate that entire weight class to be great. Now, if you look at Conor McGregor at the time that he did, he made the 155 pound weight class profitable. With all the people he talked to stuff and all this stuff, those people at 155, the lightweight division, get paid the most. And he went to 70, and 70 starting to do it, but it's not as effective as 155. 155 has a lot of hype, has a lot of banter, has a lot of people talking. Where at 185, you know, there's not anybody that has a character. Not anybody has intriguing, you know, post-fight interviews. They get lost within the shuffle of everybody else. And when you put me on the mic, my job is to entertain. My job is to go out there and handle business. And my job is to make sure the people behind me are going to get good paychecks later on in life. Um, you said there's no personalities like you at 185. No, let's let's talk about the champion right now. I believe the champion is um, the last style bender, right? Yeah, he, he's a great personality. He, mm -hmm. I think he's a great champion. I love his energy. I love his dance. I love his talk. I love how he is one of the first people to really come out and show up that he likes anime and he likes these different, um, you know, just different uh, like cartoons or different styles that most people aren't traditionally about. Everyone thinks that MMA fighters are these just like burly, you know, bar drinking assholes that try to pick a fight with anybody. No, we're not. 
Absolutely not. Let's talk about um, let's talk about your next fight. Do you have any idea who your next fight's going to be? When it's going to be? Uh, anything yet? No, I'm taking some time off. I, I so in the Maki fight, I like injured my hand, and then again in the Alvi fight, I injured it even more. So we're actually just doing some scans to make sure everything's good. There's nothing broken in it. We did the X-rays, but now we got to get MRIs and just kind of like work there because mm -hmm. that's where we're at. And I was in 11 month straight camp nonstop. And right now I want to grow. I need to build. There's a lot of stuff I need to improve on my arsenal. So James Krause and I are in the uh, the drawing books. We're playing. We're evolving. And, you know, when you see me, the <laughs> thing is, is it's not going to be something that someone's like, oh, it's Julian Marquez. But all right, here we go. We got Julian Marquez. Let's get that banter of hate talking with Miley Cyrus. Let's see if they got the pickleball tournament going on. Let's That's right. see what this guy's going <laughs> on. We're going to sit there and talk about many other things knowing that I come back. So when it happens, it'll happen fast. Uh, speaking of the pickleball, whatever happened with Mahomes, I heard yesterday in the news he said he wants to go 20-0. and 0. What do you think of that? I, I believe it. I believe it. You know, he – look, he has all of the natural talent. He has all the ability. And that guy is unreal. I don't think you understand – like I, people understand, but I don't think they really understand. He's still young in the sport, and he's showing so much more promise than, than a lot of these, you know, quarterbacks i believe he's going to take it i believe the team is doing great we got a good o-line uh we got a good d-line and our receivers are fucking they're unreal i just saw tyree kill the other day and he's all he's in shape ready to go for otas and Kansas city's going to be on the map again yeah that's great I, i'm i'm a tom brady fan i'm from massachusetts oh, i watched so him win his super bowls there and now i'm docking tampa i've seen him win a super bowl here uh maybe one day you know mahomes can uh you know, put a couple extra rings on his hand and, and uh, see what happens. I, I'm with it. I'm with it. Tom Brady is always going to be the GOAT. Um, and if, if uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes can compete with that same exact thing, being with the same team, creating the same championships and winning that many rings, I'm with it. But I'll tell you a quick little story about Tom Brady and I. So when we were at UFC Jacksonville, I was in a 20 or a 15 – uh, Kansas City Chiefs jersey. I was standing there on the opposite side, right at the front row, and Tom was straight across from me through the cage uh, by Dana's section, and we were staring at each other. He looked right at me. I looked at him. He saw the big red 15, and I had some of his teammates come over and shake my hand. We were doing a lot of like conversations, but Tom wouldn't come over because I, I like – and I like this attitude. He wouldn't come over because I was wearing 15, and that's – he takes that serious, and I like that about him. I like that he wouldn't come over and talk to me because I was wearing his competitor's, you know, jersey and I wasn't representing him. That's that's what I like to see. Mm. I want to ask you a question about um, Israel Adesanya and Marvin Vittori too. Um, what do you think Marvin can do this time around um, to, to to win to, to to defeat Israel Adesanya? Can he can he take something from the Jan Blachowicz, um fight? Um, what's your opinions on that? Man, this is the thing is like. You know, Israel is a fantastic fighter. He's well-rounded. He's good. And he's always evolving, getting better and better, and he's learning every fight. You can see the progression. If you're a true fight fan, you can see the progression of what he's doing. And when he fought Jan, it was just – Jan's just a bigger guy. And that's it. I didn't like how he came in at 200, still super light. I thought he should have got a little bit bigger because Jan is a bigger guy. And when it came to the striking, I, I think Israel is doing great, but whenever Jan took him down – that was – it showed his weakness when he was on top. He was able to hold him down. Now, I don't believe Marvin is that big to where he can hold him down the same way um, if Israel gets tired. Now, he's going to have to strike with him. He's going to have to strike with him and make it a mixed martial arts fight. He's going to have to show takedowns, come up off of combinations, go back down into takedowns. It's going to be shot, combination shot to get style bender down. It's going to be very difficult. You know, it's not something very easy because, I mean, we even saw Yoel Romero try to get a shot on him, and he couldn't get that shot. So Marvin, it's going to be tough for him. Could he? Yeah, absolutely. He can take him down, and he can control it. Um, but Israel is very, very good at controlling that range, and I think mm. I think that's what's going to be at the end of it is that Israel got tired in the first – their first fight, and it was a uh, – he got tired in the first fight, and it was a uh, – a three minute or three round fight. Now he's so used to having these five round fights and he's gone the distance with some of the great people. And he's, you know, fought some heavy hitters that are great wrestling. He was able to stop him at 85. Um, I think it's going to be the same note. We're going to get a decision victory 
uh, by Israel. I do think it's going to be super close. I think Marvin's actually going to put up a way tougher fight. His unorthodox style is hard to time. It's right. hard to go there. But um, I, I just I don't like the striking that Marvin has in this style of fight. Now, if he switches up and goes for shot, striking shot, I think that's going to help him win. But if he tries to trade the way he did with the Joker, I don't think it's going to be that good. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm of the opinion now um, that there's a blueprint and, and – I, I'm going to take Marvin um, um, f- five round split decision and new. That's that's my that's my. Oh, you got that. You got that. I, yeah, mean, I got that. I'm not going to battle that. that. I'm not going to battle that. I just think mm-hmm. there's a blueprint, but it takes a certain kind of person to be able to fill that blueprint up. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, he's going to he's going uh, to bulk up. He's going to he's going to work that wrestling. He's going to work them trips. He's going to work a little bit of striking, and he's going to keep taking them down. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I think it's good. If you think of this, there's this uh, saying is a uh, pressure built or pressure burst pipes. And he's built like a pipe. Adesanya is. He's very tall. He's very lanky. And you add a lot of pressure, it can burst it. But the thing is between like, if you look at the styles like of, of Kevin Holland, amazing striker, um, top striker in the division. And then you have Israel Adesanya, top striker in the division. They both have the same style. But the thing is, is that whenever they both get hit, it's how you see how that person reacts. I believe that Israel Asanya loves getting hit. He loves it. Like if you hit him, he doesn't back up like, oh, it was good. He gets hit and he's ready to throw back. He's ready to attack back. And that's what makes him so great and dangerous where, you know, Marvin does the same exact thing. And that's why he's up at the top. I just think it's going to be very, it's going to be a lot more difficult to take him down um, just because all all uh, Israel has to really worry about for himself is defense. You know, I don't think that the striking of Marvin would improve drastically in the, the camp that he had, um, but he does have good striking. I don't want to diminish that. He does have good striking. It's unorthodox and it's hard to time, but they kind of know each other now. They know a little bit and they both have progressed, but who do you think has gotten more uh, more of a progression since their last fight? Uh, I think it's close because I think the last fight for Israel, I don't really think he did much to prepare or evolve for the Jan fight. Um, I'm going to say it's it's pretty neck and neck for me. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, he, he, I, I mean <laughs> obviously, I mean, that fight, I mean, he was just trying to be a double champ. He, he rolled the dice and, and, you know, he didn't fail. I mean, he did pretty darn good. So in my opinion, I think, I, I mean, uh, my money's on it, man. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going for the underdog. I like it. I like it. You know, and I'll keep my money away from it because it's such a it's such a good fight. It, it really is such a good fight. You know, it's a quick turnaround for Marvin. He's been fighting like crazy. It's a quick turnaround for him. So the preparation isn't as long as a normal one. And you know, I'm very I'm intrigued about it. I'm very absolutely, intrigued. absolutely. I, I wanted to before we go and we, we we're gonna we're gonna do another interview soon. This is just a little quick quick one for everybody. I want to talk about your podcast. I want to talk about your team. I want to talk about your sponsors. I want to talk about your friends and family before we wrap it up because it's going to be a part two. Yeah, I'm with it. Let's go. Let's go on. In. I got time. We can talk for as long as you want, man. All right. I, w- I want to talk about, um, let's see. I want to talk about the Logan, the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. And then I want to talk about the Jake Paul um, breaking news today with Tyron. Yeah, that's it. So that Jake Paul fight and Tyron Woodley, let's go right into that. All let's right. Go. <laughs> LFG. I like this. I, you know, <laughs> I, I do like too. It. I like it a lot. It's bringing, you know, again, people have to sit there and, and know what it is. I can only have so many of Israel Asanya versus Marvin Vittori style fights. Like those are straight up like you're on the edge of your seat. Like, gosh, man, who's going to win? Or, you know, the uh, the Dustin Poirier uh, for Connor, like great fighters that are fighting each other. You're just sitting there at the edge of your seat. There's just so much. It's, it's just so tight, so technical, so much that it's just like it, it, you're drawn in. And I can't do that too much. I got a life to live. You know what I mean? That stuff that takes it up. It so sure does. Set, <laughs> when you set up this Tyron Woodley versus Jake Paul, you're sitting there like, finally, man, I got some entertainment. Like this stuff, like I don't care who wins. I don't care what happens. All I want to see is two dudes going in there just – Trying something new. 
one guy's a former champion. The other guy's a, a former YouTuber. They're both stepping in the, the ring to throw punches at each other. They're going to be sloppy. They're going to be weird. Something crazy might happen. I'm with it. But it's not going to be a super high-level technical fight like we're watching Lomachenko or Tyron Sp or, uh, uh, Errol Spence or uh, Terrence Crawford step in the ring. We're not talking about that. We're talking about two lower-level you know, boxers going at it with mm -hmm. prior experience. I'm not saying that, but – Right, you ain't gonna put them in the ring with some high level fighters to see if they what they do. I believe Tyron had what four or five title defenses at welterweight, 170 pounds. Now this fight's gonna be 190 pound limit, 10 ounce gloves, and eight rounds. Now I don't know how you could ever say Tyron doesn't have the advantage in this fight. It's foolish. I mean, Paul has a three and zero record. Two two what two three cans there. Uh, one guy I don't even know who he is. Uh, a basketball guy, and then Ben Askren? Come on. I I got my money's on Tyron. <laughs> I look. Am I, I saying that right? Is it Tyron? Tyron. Okay, Tyron. Tyron. Yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm I'm with it either way. I don't the I win in this fight. Where's your money? Where's your money? Come on. Oh, my money is going into the payment of Thriller Sports to watch us or Showtime, whoever put it on. <laughs> That's where my money's going. Okay. Because at the end of the day, look, uh -huh. we ruled one another. I don't care who wins. It doesn't benefit me. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't benefit the MMA community. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do nothing at all. Everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, he's a look." Tyron has fought. Uh, he, him and Ben are like they're buddies. They ride together. They're they're trash talkers. They go. They do their thing together, and I love it. Tyron is now stepping in to fight. You know, in honor of Ben to to do this. That's where I look at it. And I love it. I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be great. It's good marketing. It's going to be good trash talking. Everyone's going to talk about it on Twitter. It's going to be, it's just going to help pick up the deal. Former UFC champion versus YouTuber. And it's just, it's, it, that's all it is. It's a, it's an entertainment circus for me. And I'm <coughs> going to watch. Less interest in this weekend's fight with uh, Floyd versus Logan. What do you think? I'm, I'm not really interested. Is it in this that. weekend? I believe so. Yes. Oh shit! I didn't even know. Um, like I don't. Floyd Mayweather isn't going to lose. No. Floyd Mayweather is not going to lose. I don't care. Jake Paul's lost to that KSI, that YouTuber as well, that non-boxer. He lost to him. What but about the fifty-pound uh, diff? Uh, Logan's going to be uh, Logan's going to be two hundred pounds or right around. And have Floyd's you ever, 150. Hey, you know what the doghouse is? Yes. You know that is they they put him in the the gym inside of his deal and you just go and you just go and go and go and go. Floyd's done that many times. Floyd's been in there many times. And Floyd also has sparred people that are way bigger than him. You don't think that this dude doesn't know what he's doing? He's fighting a guy that's going to blow out his load. I, I bet you this. I bet yeah. you we're going to see a frantic finish. I bet you Floyd's going to hit him in the body. Like, Jay, Jake Paul doesn't have the power to put out Floyd, and Jake Paul doesn't have the speed to touch him. He's going to try. Logan. 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 Logan, I'm sorry. Yeah. Logan Paul. I, I do that all the time. I do it all the time. You can, you get away with two or three of those freebies. It's no problem. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. That that thing I didn't even know it was here. I'm, I'm more excited for his his brother to fight than him. I mean, let's be honest. It's it's Floyd Mayweather. Look, he can go against anybody, and you're not going to touch him. He's just very good at not being hit. He's mastered the slip. He's last or mastered the roll. Conor McGregor even landed his hardest punch on him, and it didn't even phase him. And Conor's a, a way better striker than. You know the Paul brothers. I would Absolutely. say, Absolutely. and uh, and has a lot of power behind it. He hits like a middleweight. And he knows how to use his his range. He knows everything, and he couldn't do anything to Mayweather. And Mayweather wanted to end it. He put the you know put the gas on, and he he ended it. Watch, Absolutely. Paul's going to get tired, and he's going to walk away with a check and a loss. Um, you're probably right. I just think that youth and the size of Logan. It may cause a few problems for Floyd. But like you said, a couple rounds, he's going to gas out because he's a big boy. I wanted to talk about one more thing before we go. I want to talk about Jorge Masvidal's new mix. Uh, it's called Bare Knuckle MMA. It is um, bare knuckle um, mixed martial arts, but with your bare knuckles. It's starting in Florida. Um, it's legalized in Florida. And the first event is going to be next month in Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, you're going to have Felony, Charles Bennett, um, also known as Crazy Horse. Um, versus Jason Knight. Um, that's the main event. What do you think about um, bare knuckle mixed martial arts? 
So I, I legit, I saw that, but I didn't know if that, I didn't know what that was. So that's Jorge Masvidal's event, and it's going to be bare knuckle mixed martial arts. It's just like bare knuckle fighting championship, David Feldman's company. But what they're doing with this version is they're going to have mixed martial arts incorporated into it. So they're going to have the ground game. Wow, that's intense. Wow. That could, be, <laughs> that could be scary for sure. I, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, um, I'm intrigued by it. I'm intrigued to see how it goes. I'm not going to say anything different because. I, I spent a majority of my career watching people in the back of the, you know, back alleys and the back. We call this thing called Red Bridge when we were kids and we'd watch, you know, two kids in high school duke it out. And it was the same exact thing. And it was just as entertainer, entertaining as, you know, having gloves on. I think just gloves make it more um, socially acceptable for people to watch. Now, I'm still going to watch it. I'm still going to support Jorge, Jorge Masvidal. I love Jason Knight. Charles Bennett, a couple of my friends have fought him. Crazy Horse has always been exciting. It doesn't matter. Now you're going to put two funny, crazy dudes inside of the octagon, bare knuckle, doing mixed martial arts, what they grew up doing, and they all have a, a, over, what, 90 fights with them both together? Easily. I think yeah. I think 100 and something for, for felony and 30 or 40 for Jason. Yeah, 100 so, and change. And, and they're getting paid. Let's go. Let's see it. Let's, <laughs> let's see go. It. I'm ready to watch it. I'm ready to watch the whole card. If Jorge Masvidal hears this and he wants to bring me out there to commentate or to be there as a superstar, I would. <coughs> that would be fun. What is your take? How do you see I love it. bare knuckle? Here's the <laughs> thing. Here's the thing. I've been working in the bare knuckle scene industry for about three or four years. I work for um, David Feldman, the owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. So I'm a huge fan. I'm a UFC fan, MMA fan, but I'm a bare knuckle fan, man. I love it. I love it. All bare knuckle sports, Lethway, Valley Tudo. Um, what is the the Nigerian one? Dumbe. I love when they use elbows and 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 headbutts and all that stuff. I like war, man. I like going to war and watching it live. Yeah, I remember growing up, growing up watching these like just watching old school pride where everyone's doing the craziest shit in the world, soccer kicks, bare knuckle, just all that stuff growing up, and there's like no rules to it. I like that. Trust me. I, I love it. Going I back, love it. Back in the day. The gloves are cool. The gloves are just for, you know, ESPN and, you know, <laughs> that stuff. But I like the underground. Underground rap, underground uh, music, let's put it like that. And under, as you can see up top. Absolutely. I've been looking at that the whole time. Have you, oh, can, you see my, can you see my Nick Diaz versus Takanermi Gomi uh, yeah. pride fight? And I see, see it up there at the top. Okay. Yeah, and you see a little Bruce Lee action, and then you see a, a Nate Diaz uh, painting I had painted. Your, boy, your boy's got records on records here. I'm looking, man. I'm like, I, the next time we talk, I want you to grab some records and, and oh, just talk about them. Yeah, I got stuff at the top right over here. I got man. Home Alone, Predator, Behind It's Freddy Krueger. I got so awesome. I got a collection of different, various different, and I got my mom up top there. Well, but, we're going to – go ahead. No, I'm, I'm with it, man. I'm with it. Is Biloxi, Mississippi? What's the date on? The um, I have event? to check the phone, but I believe it is in June, um, first or second week in June. I'll post it on MMA Uncensored Instagram um, uh, as soon as we get off here. And as soon as we get off here, I'll get this video up on YouTube. Uh, this is Chris LeBeau here, MMA Uncensored Podcast, the Cuban Missile Crisis, Julian Marquez, middleweight, coming for you. Let's Thanks go. for joining us, brother. Thank you, brother. We'll I appreciate it.